Greetings, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be on famine. Do you know famine is defined as basically a lack of food? which can be caused by a number of things, but one of the most common is a lack of rain, which they are experiencing in South Africa. Since the uh, communist government is murdering off all the uh, farmers, let's just go that route. But it could also be caused by disease, and another a number of other reasons but sometimes there's different types of famines as we're going to find out now this is not going to be an extensive study on famines but we're going to take a look at some common things in first kings chapter 8 and verse 33 Solomon said the following. Now, King Solomon was the son of King David. He was considered the wisest man that ever lived. You wouldn't kind of know that if you looked at towards the end of his life when his many heathen wives turned his heart away from God. But uh, I'm nobody to talk, believe me. All right, verse 33. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 33. Now, Solomon had just finished, recently finished uh, God's, uh, the, uh, the temple. And he's making this prayer. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 33. And he says, When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy. Hmm, do you know that Israel has an enemy? See, that's the complete opposite of what the church teaches today. God teaches, well, God just loves everybody. But guess what? Solomon says that Israel had an enemy, the enemy. And of course, they're going to tell you that little piece of land over in the Middle East. They'll say that's Israel, but that's not true. Israel's a people, not a place. Israel will be taken to a place, but Israel's not a piece of land. Israel is a people. When thy people Israel be smitten down before the enemy, because they have sinned against thee, and shall turn again to thee, turn again to who? God. And shall turn again to thee, and confess thy name, and pray and make supplication unto thee in this house. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. Now, why would he say that? I mean, they're already there. They're in the land that God gave to the fathers. Uh, to the, their father Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. Why would he say that? Is this a prophecy for the future? I think so. Then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy people Israel and bring them again unto the land which thou gavest unto their fathers. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain, because they have sinned against thee. Ooh, because they have sinned against thee. There's no rain. Huh. All right, let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 11. Now, this is the books of Moses. And Deuteronomy 11 and verse 16. Take heed to yourselves. That means pay attention. Take heed to yourselves that your heart be not deceived, and ye turn aside and serve other gods. 
and worship them. And then the Lord's wrath be kindled against you, and he shut up the heaven that there be no rain, and that the land yield not her fruit, and yet le and lest ye perish quickly from off the good land which the Lord giveth you. See, right there, God gives you, God gave Israel a warning. Let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 35. When heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin. You see, just because you pray and confess his name, that's only two thirds. There's another third. It says, and turn from their sin. See, there's people today that'll tell you, oh, well, all you got to do is believe. Don't turn from your sin. You don't have to repent. Why, you know, no, you don't have to do that. But John the Baptist preached repentance. Jesus taught repentance in the second and third chapter of Revelation. In the second chapter of Revelation, Jesus told the churches to repent and do the first works. Don't believe me. Believe Jesus. Read it. You know, what is he telling? A believing church to repent of what? Their unbelief? I mean, that's that's what they're saying now. When 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 the Bible says repent, they're saying the repent of your unbelief. But in Revelation chapter two, John and is talk is being talked to by Jesus, who's telling the church to be zealous and repent. The church. Is there an unbelieving church? Well, yeah, I guess there kind of is, but I I you know, come on, people. He's talking to a believing church, telling them to repent and do the first works. What did they do in the beginning? When, when you were on fire for the Lord, when you first got saved, but they kind of cooled down, you know, the fires kind of cooled down and they, they became lukewarm. And God said he would spew them out of his mouth. So it says, when the heaven, when heaven is shut up and there is no rain because they have sinned against thee, if they pray toward this place and confess thy name and turn from their sin when thou afflictest them, then hear thou in heaven and forgive the sin of thy servants and of thy people Israel, that thou teach them the good way wherein they should walk and give rain upon thy land, which thou hast given to thy people for an inheritance. If, if there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, what is pestilence? Disease. Now, I'll let you in a little secret here. Well, it's, it's not a secret, but... Whenever there's an extended famine, disease always follows because your body is not getting the nourishment that it needs to fight off disease. So when you have no food, sickness always follows. I'm talking extended sickness, you know. I mean, extended famine, sickness will come. So if there be in the land famine, if there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, what is mildew? Mildew's mold, people. You know, crops can get mold. If there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locust. And let me tell you something, people. Locusts can wipe out every stinking green thing on the face of the earth. I mean, you'll be like thinking, wow, next week we're going to have one incredible harvest. And then all of a sudden at noontime, the skies turn black. And you're going, what the heck's all that buzzing? 
Next thing you know, there's these huge grasshoppers everywhere eating everything. And guess what happens to your harvest? You look around, there's some fat, fat, fat grasshoppers who could eat many times their own weight. And there's, they say there's not even millions of them. They say there can be billions of them. I don't know if that's true, but you know. If there be pestilence, blasting, mildew, locusts, or if there be caterpillar, if their enemy besiege them in the land of their cities, whatsoever plague, whatsoever sickness there be, what prayer and supplication soever be made by any man or by all thy people Israel, which shall know every man the plague of his own heart, and spread forth his hands toward this house. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and do, and give to every man according to his ways. Uh, in the eastern part of the world, they would say that's karma. You know, you basically the Bible says you reap what you sow. And do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. And that's scary, people. That's scary. The Bible says the heart's deceitfully wicked. Well, let's, let me look that up. Oh, this is what I was looking for. Jeremiah chapter 17 and verse 9. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Well, the answer to that is the Lord. So, all right. Oh, uh, let's see. Verse 39. Then hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place and forgive and do and give to every man according to his ways, whose heart thou knowest. For thou, even thou only, knowest the hearts of all the children of men that they may fear thee all the days that they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. Hmm. All right, verse 41. Moreover concerning a stranger that is not of thy people Israel, but cometh out of a far country for thy name's sake, for they shall hear of thy great name and of thy strong hand and of of thy stretched out arm, when he shall come and pray toward this house, hear thou in heaven thy dwelling place, and do according to all that the stranger calleth for to thee for, that all people of the earth may know thy name, to fear thee, as do thy people Israel, and that they may know that this house which I build it is called by thy name. If thy people go out to battle against their enemy, Whithersoever thou shalt send them, and shalt pray unto the Lord toward the city which thou hast chosen, and toward the house that I have built for thy name, then hear thou in heaven their prayer and their supplication, and maintain their cause. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy. Do you realize that when, when, when we sin, and God's angry, he's going to deliver us to the enemy. Now, what do you think's happening today, people? What do you think's happening in South Africa? What do you think's happening in the evil large cities of the United States and Europe? We're being delivered into the hands of the enemy because of sin, things that displease God and brings his anger and wrath against us. I mean, you don't even hear preaching against sin anymore. Now it's all, well, judge not lest ye be judged. You know, and if a, a, a middle school teacher, a junior high school teacher is a NAMBLA member, that's the North American Man Boy Love Association. You know, that's a group of sodomites that thinks that uh, men should be able to have sex with uh, young teenage boys 
and there shouldn't be any laws against it. After all, they were born that way. I mean, you don't even, you know, they want us to tolerate evil. It's called sin, people. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them, and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy, far or near. And that happened, people. That happened in uh, to the northern Israel on the Assyrian uh, captivity, and it happened in southern Judah and Jerusalem in the Babylonian captivity. And it's going to happen again. Verse 47. Yet if, yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captive, saying, We have sinned. That's probably the three three of the most three of uh three words that the Lord loves to hear from us. We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And just acknowledging that we've done this doesn't mean nothing. The Lord wants us to turn away from sin, perverseness, and wickedness. Yet, if they shall be think themselves in the land, whither they were carried captives, and repent, and make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carry them captives, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely, we have committed wickedness, and so return unto thee with all their heart and with all their soul in the land of their enemies, which led them away captive, and pray unto thee toward their land, which thou gavest unto their fathers, the city which thou hast chosen, and the ha house which I have built for thy name. Then hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause, and forgive thy people that have sinned against thee. It doesn't say forgive your people that of, of their unbelief. No, it says forgive thy people that have sinned against thee, and all their transgressions, wherein they have transgressed against thee, and give them compassion before them who carry them captive, that they may have compassion on them. For they be thy people and thine inheritance, which thou broughtest forth out of Egypt from the midst of the furnace of iron. That's interesting. That thine eyes may be open unto the supplication of thy servant and unto the supplication of thy people Israel to hearken unto them in all that they call for unto thee. Listen to this carefully. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth. Who separated the people? God did. Who's wanting to mix us all together with all this integration and, and refugees? and Who's all trying to mix us all together? The world. The wicked ones. And who separated them? God did. God wanted his people separate from the satanic, heathen ways of the world. Verse 53, For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance, as thou spakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. That right there, people, is the only way that America is going to have its land healed. If you put your trust in Donald Trump, you're going to be sorely disappointed. That's all I can tell you. I mean, after all, look at who his family is married to. They're married to people that, by Bible definition, are antichrists. 
So, you know, I always, I've heard people say that, well, people didn't vote for Donald Trump. They were voting against Hillary because they knew what Hillary was. I don't know if that's true. That's just something I heard. So, all right. Verse 54. May as well finish this reading this. And it was so that when Solomon had made an end of praying all this prayer and supplication unto the Lord, he arose from before the altar of the Lord from kneeling on his knees with his hands spread up to heaven. And he stood and blessed all the congregation of Israel with a loud voice saying, Blessed be the Lord that hath given rest unto his people Israel according to all that he promised. There hath not failed one word of all his good promises which he promised by the hands of Moses, his servant. You know, God promises blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience. But you don't hear that preached in church. Uh, the Lord our God be with us as he was with our fathers. Let him not leave us nor forsake us, that he may incline our hearts unto him to walk in all his ways and to keep his commandments and his statutes and his judgments, which he commanded our fathers. And let these words wherewith I have made supplication before the Lord be nigh unto the Lord our God day and night, that he might maintain the cause of his servant and the cause of his people Israel at all times as the manner shall require, that all the people of the earth may know that the Lord is God and there is none else." Amen to that. Let your heart therefore be perfect with the Lord our God to walk in his statutes and to keep his commandments as at this day. And the king and all Israel with him offered sacrifice before the Lord. And Solomon offered a sacrifice of peace offerings, which he offered unto the Lord, two and twenty thousand oxen and a hundred and twenty thousand sheep. Boy, that's a whole lot of animals. So the king and all the children of Israel dedicated the house of the Lord. The same day that the Lord hallowed the middle of the court that was before the house of the Lord, for there he offered burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings, because the brazen altar that was before the Lord was too little to receive the burnt offerings and meat offerings and the fat of the peace offerings. And at that time Solomon held a feast. That's the opposite of a famine, people. A feast is the opposite of a famine. I just thought I would point that out. Yeah, I know, Captain Obvious here. And at that time Solomon held a feast and all Israel with him, a great congregation from the entering in of Hamath unto the river of Egypt before the Lord our God, seven days and, and seven days, uh, our God, seven days and seven days, even 14 days. I thought I was reading that wrong. Before the Lord our God, seven days and seven days, even 14 days. On the eighth day he sent the people away, and they blessed the king and went unto their tents, joyful and glad of heart, for all the goodness that the Lord had done for David his servant and for Israel his people. In the book of Job, chapter 5 and verse 20, uh, this is probably, Job is considered the oldest book in the Bible, and I could believe it. Uh, here we go. In famine... He, God, in famine he shall redeem thee from death and in war from the power of the sword. Thou shalt be hid from the scourge of the tongue, neither shalt thou be afraid of destruction when it cometh. At destruction and famine thou shalt laugh. Neither shalt thou be afraid of the beasts of the earth. For thou shalt be in league with the stones of the field, and the beasts of the field shall be at peace with thee. So, all right, now, I think I'm going to make this the end of part one. Uh, I've been having a lot of weird problems with my computer lately, so, all right, this is going to be the end of part one of Famine. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' name, amen.